All right, I want to welcome everybody to the uh, Elkhart Community School Corporation Great American Solar Eclipse 2024 um, presentation. Um, I appreciate you all coming out tonight. Um, what I want to point out afterwards for those with little ones, we have some activities for you to engage in so that you can further educate the kids and, and otherwise. So, all right. Um, I am Dan Walsh. Um, first and foremost, I am an Elkhart High School teacher. I teach science, uh, physics, aeronautical engineering, um, and I also do research at the University of Notre Dame in astrophysics uh, during the summer as a research experience for teachers. Um, but recently I was selected by NASA as an Eclipse Ambassador Partner and this has given me the opportunity to do some outreach with the community and that's why we're here tonight is to educate you about the solar eclipse how to be safe how to enjoy it more understand it more and you know rather than just go through the period of the eclipse itself actually get more meaning about the what's going on when the eclipse happens okay all right so to that end nasa and the National Science Teachers Association and the um, Astronomical Society of the Pacific gave us some specific training to educate us about the solar eclipse. And many of the things that you'll see tonight have been given to me by them. Okay. All right, so by way of my background, first of all, I want to give you an understanding of what I, how I came to learn about um, you know, astronomy. Um, I was fortunate uh, when I joined the Navy um, to go to Notre Dame on an ROTC scholarship. Um, I had never thought about being able to go to college, but the Navy gave me that opportunity, and I flew aircraft for the Navy, maritime patrol aircraft, that this is pre-GPS. So we had to navigate somehow and we navigated by the sun, the moon, and the stars. So I learned how to use the celestial bodies to figure out where we were in the world, which was really kind of neat to, to understand that you could point a device at one of those objects in space and figure out where you were and where you were going within a reasonable accuracy. Um, that led to my thirst for knowledge, and I've been fortunate again to be able to go to three other universities at the expense of U.S. government. Um, Embry-Riddle, Naval Postgraduate School, and Indiana University. Um, and they have all been paid for by the U.S. government. So for the little ones in this, the audience here, I say shoot the bar high. Um, if you've got a desire to do something, don't let somebody tell you you can't do it. You have opportunities and for me it was through education. Um, so that was an avenue for me to get out of Chicago and to see and do many things that many people never get a chance to do. I've lived on both coasts twice and lived in Iceland. How many people can say they've lived in Iceland? Only 260,000 people live in that country. So at least they can say that. So, um, and I've been able to partner with NASA. I never thought that I would even have a chance to work with an organization of that magnitude, an organization that put people on the moon and to be part of that. And tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about an opportunity you have to be a researcher for NASA with the solar eclipse. You too can be, become a scientist on April 8th. All right, so how do you organize a solar eclipse party? Well, you plan it. All right, well, 
For those of you that know me, I start off all of my classes with a bad dad joke. I torture my students with them. I have a calendar on my desk, and I was really afraid of telling that eclipse joke because I figured I'd leave some of you in the dark. <laughs> all right. All right, so let's get to the solar eclipse. Enough of my dad jokes. Okay, what do you really need to know about the solar eclipse? For starters, I'm going to ask you to put your thinking cats on. All right? That is my dog, and that was my cat. Okay? It took about 10 takes to let him tolerate that, but all right. But put your thinking cat on for a second, and I want you to answer this question about the solar eclipse, about what you might know about it. All right? Let me fix something first. That's why this is not doing this. OK. So just what is a solar eclipse? Is it an automobile made by Mitsubishi? Is it an 18th century British racehorse? Is it the sun obscured by the moon, which creates a solar eclipse? Is it the sun obscured by the earth, which creates a lunar eclipse? Or are eclipses just totality awesome? Okay. Or all of the above? How many people say all of the above? All right. Yes, there is a car made by Mitsubishi called the Eclipse. Does anybody have one? Nope. OK. All right. So the proper definition of a solar eclipse or an eclipse occurs when we have a heavenly body move into the path of another heavenly body. So I'm going to summon some whole heavenly bodies down here to help me out with the demonstration. We have got the sun, the moon, and the earth tonight. So you'll notice the, the earth has the tides around her waist. So when the moon orbits the, the earth, the tides will actually move. Okay, And then we have the moon, and we have the radiant sun over here. Okay. Now I want to introduce my cast, first of all. This is McKenna Lichty. McKenna was one of my former high school physics students at Adams High School. She is now studying astrophysics at the University of Notre Dame and will graduate and go on to her PhD at Michigan State next year. Okay. I'm fortunate in that research program in the summer to bring a student with me. And McKenna was one of my students five years ago, is it now? And then we have another one in the audience. Two years ago? Yep. All right. And then we have one of our esteemed teachers on the Elkhart staff here, Melanie Eisenbarger, as the moon. <laughs> Melanie was an astrophysics major at Ball State. And her first position was running the planetarium at Ball State before coming here to be a teacher. So if any of you want to talk to somebody about astrophysics and are really interested in it, these two, you really want to grab and bend their ear later on. Okay? And then we have, we have our child development teacher here, Farah Burkhardt. Miss Radiance herself. And she's going to pose as, as the sun here tonight for us. Okay. All right. So, all 
All right, come on in, have a seat. Make yourself at home. All right. So, they are not ready for primetime solar eclipse players. All right. So, the moon cycle takes 29 and a half days. So, for this moon phase is to make all the way around, it's going to take 29 and a half days. And we go from new moon at the beginning to new moon at the end. Basically, you don't see anything. And oddly enough, we're going to experience a lunar eclipse on March 25th. So 15 days, roughly 20 days from now, you'll see a lunar eclipse over here before we see the solar eclipse back around there. Okay. All right, so this is how things go. We are going to start with the new moon. Okay. And we move forward. All right. So we're going to go to waxing crescent. All right. So you know the adage, wax on, wax off. All right. So the moon starts to wax into a crescent. And then the next phase of the moon turns into the first quarter. And then after the first quarter, we get waxing gibbous. And then it turns into the full moon. Okay. And then it starts to wane. So we start losing the moon. And this is waning gibbous. And then the next phase is the third quarter, followed by waning crescent, and back to the full moon, which is where we will see our solar eclipse. Now, the question for you is why do we not see a solar eclipse every 29 and a half days? What about Melanie's orbit? does not allow us to see that solar eclipse every time. So this slide gives you an idea. Her orbit is tilted at five degrees. So it has to be perfect when she's aligned with the sun and the earth for this to happen. And that's what really makes this unique is that she will be at, I say she, the moon, will be at its closest point of approach on April 8th, which means it will last longer than normal. Think about this. If somebody is closer to you, when you try to look around them, it's harder to look around them when they're closer to you than when they are further away. So when the moon is closer to the Earth, we're going to see the sun less for that period of time, or it'll be covered longer. So that's one of the unique things about this solar eclipse. All right, thank you. All right, note in the corner here says eclipses tend to be, tend to happen in pairs. So we had one back in October, which was a partial eclipse. This one is going to be near full, full in the middle of the state. So there's our two where we see them. But the next one will not happen until 2045. And so, you know, that's a long time in coming, 21 years from now. All right, so we've seen what makes the solar eclipse, the, the alignment of the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon. And then what makes the lunar eclipse the flip-flop of that? We have to have the Earth in the way of the sun and then blocks out on the moon. 
All right. Now, this is a path of the totality. You can see that it comes up from the southwest, from Mexico, up into the central United States, across Illinois, across central Indiana. And so we are slightly above the path of totality. In fact, we are going to be at 97% here in Elkhart, as opposed to 100% down in the central state. I was down in Brown County two weeks ago, and I asked about their plans for the solar eclipse. They're expecting across that swath of the state of Indiana a million people to show up that are enthusiasts to want to see the total eclipse. So we will have a party, and they will plan it. All right. So again, that means a lot of traffic in the state of Indiana, okay? which is what's led some schools to decide we're going to take the day off, not us. All right, so I'm going to show you a video that gives you a depiction of the eclipse from start to finish. It's going to last about not this video, but the eclipse is going to last about two and a half hours. Okay. So let me show you the quick video. Okay, it starts with the moon just approaching the sun from the southeast there in the picture. And that is approximately 1.48 p.m. As soon as the moon crests into the sun, that's when the eclipse starts to occur. So here's the video. And this is faster than real time, so... Basically, it starts to be Pac-Man. It starts to eat the moon. And I'm going to stop it right there. And that's 309. And we'll back it up to see what exactly what time it started to crest into the sun. So it's... Oops, sorry. Right there. 1.53 is when it will start to crest into the sun. And there we go. All right, 3.10. And then it departs. And it finally leaves at 4.24. So you can see the time that the moon is covering the sun goes from 1.53 to 4.24. Now, that time period, it's dangerous to look at the sun without protection. And I'll tell you a little sea story here. I grew up with a guy by the name of Sonny. And we named Sonny, Sonny for a reason. We lived across the street from a park. And we would always go over there and play softball. Sonny was the kind of kid that wasn't really athletic, but really wanted to play. So we let him play with us, but we always picked him last, and we put him in right field. And right field was out if you hit the ball into right field. Because Sonny would stand there with his mitt on the ground, with his hand over his face, and he would do this to the sun. We always wondered what Sonny was doing. He loved to see the shadow of the sun between the fingers in his hand, and he'd do it like every 10 seconds. I ran into Sonny 10 years ago at a high school reunion, and Sonny was blind in his right eye. So how many of you sit and stare at the sun? Nobody does, right? Because it hurts. When it's covered like this, it's not going to hurt. 
at least you won't know that it hurts until it's too late. Because it's covering really a lot of the glare, which is what causes us to look away, but it's not covering the harmful UV, UV rays that could harm your eyes, which is why we're gonna talk about how to be safe during this time frame, okay? All right, so this is one of the handouts in the back. Um, this is available, this makes it easy for you to remember. We've got a little quarter sheet that you can take home with you, put you with your sunglasses to make sure you remember when it happens, okay? So the, the eclipse will actually start to the south and then it'll continue to the southeast and then further southeast. So it'll be in that direction about 55 degrees on the horizon as it continues to set, it'll be at 41 degrees before it sets. Okay, now, as I said, never stare directly into the sun during an eclipse without protection. You're gonna need solar eclipse glasses. Okay, we have solar eclipse glasses for everybody tonight. You can take some home with you. Um, whatever you need for you and your family members. Okay, now, it's not safe to do it from the time that the eclipse starts to the time that the eclipse ends, unless you're in totality. For that time frame that it's totally covered, you would have to be in the center part of the state of Indiana, not up here in Elkhart. If you were there, you could take them off for 10 minutes and watch the sun without harm to your eyes. But we're not there. Okay? So you need to have the glasses on during that time frame, if you're looking at the sun. All right? You need to make sure that you have ISO certified glasses because there are bootleg glasses out there. People try to sell things. In 2017, there were people and we know you can go on the internet and buy just about anything. You wanna make sure that you're getting the real thing, okay? So we have the real deal tonight for you, okay? So there are other ways to indirectly look at the sun. One of which is with a pinhole viewer. Another is with eclipse glasses. You can use shade 14 welding glass. So if you have a welding helmet, you can put that on. Okay, you can watch it on a video on the internet. It's not gonna harm your eyes. You can watch it on your cell phone. So you can actually videotape it on your cell phone and then watch it on the phone afterwards. Okay. Now, if you've got a telescope, that's gonna magnify the light signature. So you wanna have a light filter or an H alpha filter on there. Because if you were to take a leaf and put it behind the magnifying glass on the, on the telescope, it would actually burn that leaf in your hand and set it on fire. Just imagine what it would do to your eye without that filter. All right, so here's a picture of a person using a pinhole viewer. You've got a hole in a piece of paper and she's projecting it on another piece of paper. As the solar eclipse happens, you'll actually see the shadow, which is kind of cool to watch a shadow appear across another piece of paper. And you're not looking directly at the sun, so you're not gonna harm your eyes doing this. So you, here's a depiction of what she's doing. At least a meter apart, a meter's about three feet, okay? You could project it onto a wall, on the ground. And we have pinhole viewers for you to take home if you want, okay? Just a piece of cardboard already cut out with holes in it. Now, a colander will do just the same thing. It's got many more holes. 
And I happen to have one in my classroom that has two purposes. One was for the solar eclipse in 2017, and that's why it stayed in my classroom. And if you know me, I love hats. And if you want to join the Pastafarians, you can worship the flying spaghetti monster. This is the only religion that is allowed to wear a hat when they take their driver's license photo. Seriously, look it up on the internet. They have a 175-page manifesto. And churches on Friday during happy hour. It's my kind, of, my kind of religion. All right, so you can use that as projection. You can see in this, you've got the moon starting to crest into the sun. You've got that number of pinholes there. Okay. Now, what are you gonna see? things that you otherwise would not see looking directly at the sun, which is kind of cool. We see the corona. What's another name for the corona? What is a... A what? Okay. What is corona, though? A crown. It's the sun's crown. So you're seeing the crown the outermost layer of the solar atmosphere of the sun peeking out at you. All of those other rays are blocked so you can see this. Okay? You can see these prominences, structures of the corona that are spurting out the side of the sun, basically the magnetic field of the sun acting on the surface. Those loops are bigger than the size of the Earth. You could actually take an Earth and shove it through one of those loops. It's that big. Okay. Helmet streamers over here. Coronal loops down here. And then polar plumes. So things to look for when, you know, when we get to bit 97%. All right. So what can I expect to happen when the solar eclipse happens? Well, we can see shadows. We know that the sun's going to go away. We're going to see bands. I'll show you some pictures of these. It's going to get dark. When it gets dark, what happens to the temperature? It goes down. Okay. It's going to look like a 360-degree sunset outside. And we're going to get some ooh and an ah, right? Can I have an ooh? Can I have an ah? All right. Streetlights might come on because they think it's dark. And then the animals will react, too, thinking that it's actually nighttime. Okay? So here's a picture of pinhole effects, which is kind of cool looking at what is going to be projected on the ground from the Earth. Little eclipse shadows. This is really kind of freaky. The bands that you might see on the walls. Looks like wobbly, huh? But this, if you look closely, you might be able to find this somewhere on a wall. Okay. Right at the beginning of totality, when it's totally covered. Okay. Here's our 360 degree sunset. It'll start to look dark around us. This is a fisheye lens looking up. And if it's dark enough, we may actually start to see stars. Okay. 
Stars that you wouldn't otherwise see at that time of the day. Right. Now, in order to see some of this stuff, there are other opportunities. I talked to you about using your cell phone. There is an app you can download for free called Solar Snap. Um, this allows you to videotape and do special things with the solar eclipse. Now, this is by no means any kind of promotion or advocation or anything. There are instructions to go along with this, so you must follow those instructions. So don't come back to me and tell me if you've done something wrong with your phone. Okay. Um, it does come with its own specialized set of solar filters if you want to buy those. But all you need to do is take your solar eclipse glasses and put it over the lens, and that'll suffice for the same purpose. You don't necessarily need to pay the $16 for the, the solar filters. That's really what they're trying to get you to do, is buy the solar filters. Okay. So if you've got one set of glasses on and one set of glasses on your, your phone, you're, you're good. But it gives you some really good pictures that you can then go back and look at afterwards. Totality is a, a really good app that tells you a lot of information about the solar eclipse. So both of these are free. Download them on your iPhone and then go and research and learn more about the solar eclipse. And this is the big thing. This is where you can become a citizen scientist. This is where you get to send data to NASA. Okay. NASA has created its own app. You can see the layers here. We can do research on trees, land cover, mosquitoes, clouds, but they've added to it an eclipse module. So during the eclipse, you can take temperature readings and then put them into the app, and this app will then take it and upload it into NASA's database. So they're trying to get a reading of what the temperature is, both at totality and all the way out from it, so they can map the entire area that the solar eclipse goes through and get more refined data. And if we can get many people to do this and put information in, then they're going to get a lot more data involved. And this will actually corroborate what they're looking at. What they're really looking for is them to find out that this is, what they're looking at is what they really think it is, okay? So this gives you an opportunity to do some science for NASA, okay? All right, and that it will be available on March 15th as far as the app is concerned. You can download it now, but the, the extension won't be available until March 15th. All right, now, to help consolidate all of these resources into one place, Elkhart Schools has created a website. Okay? If you want, there is the QR code. You can scan it right now, and that'll take you to the website. Otherwise, if you want to wait, we've got handouts for this. You can take those home. It'll give you the URL and the code. Now, let me go through a couple of things that are on the website because it's kind of important for you to know about. All right. So we have some information about what the solar eclipse is, some background here. The Department of Education has published curricula for every age group from kindergarten all the way up through high school. And these are all things that are in the Department of Education's curricula for the state of Indiana that students cover. All right. So this gives teachers resources and parents to work with their students. Um, and then 
The viewing location that I showed you is on here, so if you forget where that was at, you can just bring that up on here. Information on how to view the solar eclipse safely. If you want to make your own pinhole viewer, you just launch that and then you can print it. Okay, come on open. And then you punch a hole in it. Okay. Um, now, you're going to get solar eclipse glasses. We want to make sure that they're safe. We don't want to scratch them. So you have the opportunity to make solar eclipse glass cases. Put your name on it, design it whatever way you want. Okay. Next to that is the solar eclipse glass cover. And it's themed for Elkhart Community School Corporation, the Lions for the high school. All right, so we got a kitty cat here. Now, we have found that the solar eclipse glasses are made for adults. And they tend to fall off of Little's heads. So this mask holding on the solar eclipse glasses is a great idea because it's got a rubber band that goes around the back. It also gives the kids an opportunity to color it whatever way they want. So they get to be creative. And it holds their solar eclipse glasses on so it's very safe for those little ones. And then we get to this moon observation worksheet. Okay. This is a journal that allows you to track the moon every night for a month. So if you want to start off with the new moon, which will happen in five days, and follow it all the way around to the lunar eclipse on the 25, and then all the way around and draw what it looks like, all right, you have the opportunity to use this journal to do that with. And then we have a link to the NASA Globe Observer app. On that app is a sheet that you can write down the temperature readings. Some chalk art. And if you really want to play some games, we've got Bingo, Jeopardy, and Vocabulary. Okay. And then some other videos from the Department of Education. So that's our website, and we've made it with parents and teachers in mind. Okay. Oops. Now we're not done. Almost. All right, so there's the website. And please stick around and partake in some of the activities. Mrs. Burkhardt's students, who are the teacher cadets at the high school, are the ones that are going to be helping out with the students. So they're learning to be teachers. So we logically put the right people in the right place to work with the kids. And, so what's the most famous painting of an eclipse? Think of the most famous painting. I'm going to leave you with a bad dad joke here. What is the most famous painting? Come on, say it. Anybody? It has something to do with the sun, the moon, or the... It's the Mona Lisa. All right. I'm Dan Walsh. I'll be here till Friday. Please tip your waitresses. All right. Now, mind you...
I have one plug. Our heavenly bodies do parties. They do birthdays. They do bar mitzvahs. Whatever party that you might be having, they, they provide entertainment. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming. <laughs>